Some of the best spirits are based on fantastic stories. Some of them are legendary. Some of them are pure lies. Let's talk a little bit about the whiskey industry and some of those stories. Welcome to Calm Man Cocktails. I'm Derek Schomer. Today we're going to talk about little dirty secrets of the whiskey industry. And I call them dirty secrets because I don't really know if they're dirty per se. Some of them can be deceptive, but I want you guys to judge and make that decision for yourselves. So let's talk a little bit about sourcing. Sourcing is when you have something local, but the product you want isn't there, so you go get it someplace else, and you bring it here, and you sell it as your own. You may or may not give the original people credit. A lot of our New England coffee is sourced outside of New England, because it's too friggin' cold to have coffee beans here. Same goes for lemons and limes. You gotta go someplace else to get them, and you bring them in, and you brand them, and you sell them. But at the same time, you'd expect pure Florida oranges to be from Florida. What if they were actually from, like, Argentina or something? Wouldn't that be weird? How does that relate to whiskey? Whiskey also is sourced. There are over 50, maybe even 100 brands of whiskey out there right now that aren't actually distilled where you think they are. They might be bottled there. They might be produced there. But the distillery could be completely different. Enter Midwestern Grain Products, or MGP. Now publicly traded as MGPI. You can check them out on finance.yahoo.com if you care. MGP is one of the largest sources for whiskey, if not the largest that will ever be. There are a few brands that sell their artisanal small batch whiskeys that are actually just MGP product rebottled and sold to you. The first one that really comes to mind is Templeton Rye. Templeton Rye has a great story, or they did before the lawsuits kind of came into play, but besides that, it was a Prohibition-era recipe that they found that was favored by Al Capone. So they, they bottled it, and they sell it to you. So now you get to taste what Al Capone really loved. Except they were really just sourcing the product from MGP off their recipe list, buying it, bottling it, and selling it to you, but it wasn't really what they said it was. That doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't good, it just wasn't truthful. And MGP is not going to disclose all the clients they're working for, that's up to the clients to decide. And some of the laws that say that if it's been distilled someplace, you have to put the state on the label. Or you should put the state on the label. It's kind of fuzzy. MGP was recently purchased. They've become a lot more transparent about a lot of their operations. So, for instance, if you wanted to create your own whiskey right now, there's a link below. You could click on it, and you could find all the recipes that they have for their ryes, their bourbons, their neutral grain spirits. If you wanted to create your own vodka, you wanted to create your own gin, you want to create your own 95% mash, rye, bill, whatever, they're all there. So you can either build yourself a multi-million dollar establishment that can distill and within a few years have a product, or you could buy it off of a list and have your own. Let's get something straight. There's absolutely nothing wrong with sourcing a whiskey. People source stuff all the time. It's not the sourcing that's the problem, it's the lying. And other companies have been caught for similar type of things in the past. Uh, a good example would be Whistlepig, who had been sourcing, they probably still do, source a lot of their rye from Canada, but calling it an American rye. Now, on the bottle, it reads, hand-bottled at Whistlepig Farms in Vermont. So if you were to go to Whistlepig Farms in Vermont, you would probably find people putting stuff into bottles. It's the juice inside that probably wasn't made there. So it's up to you to be cognizant of the fact that because it says handmade or hand bottled doesn't actually mean it was created there, it's the way it's worded on the bottle. Now there's this little thing called the TTP. Their regulations and guidelines in the United States dictates how a bottle should be labeled. The TTP of course starts by standing for Alcohol and Tobacco Trade Bureau. So it's really a TTP, whatever, TTP. So they should be saying, okay bottle, you need to say someplace distilled in Indiana because MGP is in Indiana. So if it says distilled in Indiana, unless you own a distillery in Indiana, you're probably sourcing your product from MGP. Let's see, James E. Pepper 1776 Rye. This is a uh, straight rye whiskey produced and bottled by James E. Pepper Corporation, Bardstown, Kentucky, distilled in Indiana. They're telling you on the label where this was distilled. The trick of the trade is that you assume that they have a distillation facility in Indiana, which they do, it's just not their own. Now the TTB regulates this sometimes when it feels like it, 
but they have a little problem. They drop the ball a lot. Staffing and resources do not exist to enforce these regulations. That's a quote from the TTB. They basically have said, I think literally have said, it's kind of the Wild West. The problem is they get a lot of producers and bottlers that are bringing in their labels and they're applying and they're kind of assuming they look good, but they're really busy, so whatever, send it along down the line. And then companies are established that can make their own fake rules. You could have a company in Texas that has literally existed for one year, having a five-year-old whiskey. How could you have a five-year-old Texas whiskey if you've only existed for one year? That means you had to find it someplace, probably MGP. But on the label, you just say, this is a Texas-branded product. This was hand-bottled in Texas. Texas pride, everybody's happy. They're like, I'm buying a product that's been distilled and produced in Texas. Wrong, You're buying a product that was bottled there, but it was distilled in Indiana. Where's your Texas pride now? So the law says if it says distilled by and it has to stay, it has to have been distilled by there. Maybe you forgot to put the distilled by on there and you just say bottled or produced. Best thing to do is if you have a whiskey you really love, look at the bottle, see if it says produced and bottled, or if it says produced and distilled or distilled by. If it says distilled, Here's an example. Knob Creek says it's handcrafted, distilled, and bottled by Knob Creek Distillery, Claremont, Kentucky. There's a good chance if I went to Google the Knob Creek Distillery, it would show up on the map. And if I turn on a satellite view, I could see the distillery. But if I do that for Bullet, up until last month, March 2017, the Bullet Distillery would have actually just showed you nothing or it would show you the MGP distillery. Because Bullet has been producing MGP for like the life of Bullet. The American whiskey, Bullet, 95 rye, 95% rye mash bill or something like that, which is one of the recipes that MGP sells. You can buy it and make your own bullet-like recipe. But I'm gonna give Bullet a pass. They're not trying to be dissuasive. They literally say on the back of Lawrenceburg, Indiana, exactly where the distillery is. Plus they were once owned by Seagram's, so was the distillery, and the distillery was making their own product. Diageo now owns the brand, and Diageo is one of the distilleries, MGP, biggest customers. So why do small brands do this? It's quite simple. It's very hard to make your own distillery. Diageo just nailed up a distillery last month and it cost them $115 million. Most people who want to start a brand don't just have that kicking around. They got to scrape up that money somehow. How do they do that? They buy their juice from another company like MGP, probably only MGP, and they brand it, they bottle it, they put their decorations on it, they give it some sort of story, and hopefully they tell you the honest truth of where they got it. It's pretty unreasonable to expect a company to compete in today's market at a $24 to $35 price point for a whiskey when it's your brand new product. It's probably going to take you five years just to age and establish yourself. And that's going to cost you millions of dollars. How are you going to recover that selling it for cheap money? You're not. You're going to have to sell for more money. And why is somebody going to buy your more money product because it says small batch on it when they could buy a hundred plus brands for less cost? Sure, most of those brands are probably buying from MGP or their established brands, Elijah Craig, Wild Turkey, Hudson Bourbon, that all have their own distilleries and have been around for a while. You can go the route American Barrels small batch spirits did. They have a small batch product they're creating it in small batches, so their product is going to be younger, which is very hard to compete against the Hudson Bourbons or the Knob Creeks that can age their product for a long time because they've been aging it before this company even existed. You want to know a few MGP brands you might have heard of besides the 1776 rye from James E. Pepper and Bullet? Do you like Angel's Envy? MGP. Dickel Rye? MGP. Riverboat Rye? Redemption Rye? Tin Cup? Cougar, which is an Australian bourbon or whiskey brand out there. Big House, Backbone, and the neutral grain spirits from Seagram's that are their vodka and their gin, all are sourced from MGP. So what's the dirty secret? The dirty secret really is that they didn't bother to tell you. They didn't tell you where it was made. Some brands will make it sound as if it's a small batch made handcrafted by Uncle Frank in his garage. And, and, and he found this secret recipe from Grandma Eleanor, and boom, you've got this massive product that you must buy because it's so exclusive. That's where the problem lies. But let's take a step back. Just because you're sourcing it from a very large distillery, if you're not calling it a small micro distillery, you're fine. You're at least being honest and transparent. Another great example is Whistlepig. Whistlepig has an old world... They, Here's a review for the old world brand Whistlepig, which is a blend of MGP product that is then cask finished with three different unique casks, raising the price, taking more time, more care into the product. So even if the product sources are from a major distillery, 
the final finished product is still Whistlepig. You're not always just taking a product as is and saying, here's the final product. There's extra steps involved. That's why it's not cookie cutter. You could go to MGP, pick two or three of the recipes and blend the ratios. Hell, if you want to, you can age it there or buy aged juice that's already there and blend in those ages. So if you wanted an eight year old bourbon that contains 5% eight, 40% three, whatever the years and the ages and the styles that you want, you can use their product and their age times to be able to get to what you need. The ratio becomes yours, the final recipe becomes yours, you can then bring that juice home or leave it there and cast condition it in, I don't know, sherry, bourbon, whiskey, tequila, rum. Angel's Envy uses a rum finishing to add a little bit of additional sweetness to their product. George Dickel filters it in charcoal which gives it a different flavored nuance. Probably a little bit more like a Tennessee whiskey. Redemption Rye bottles it as is. Buy the recipe, bottle it, you're done. Other brands are no different. Jim Beam has a product called Rye One. It's made by Beam Global. It's, it's the same company. I don't know where they distill it. It doesn't say on the bottle. It says bottled by Fielding and Jones, LTD Deerfield, Illinois. So to an average consumer that goes to the store and goes, I've never heard of Rye One. Uh, I don't know who these Fielding and Jones people are. They buy it, they take it, and they love it, and they're like, this is great. This is so much better than that Jim Beam product I have. Guess what, guys? It's a Jim Beam product. Surprise! Powwow Botanical Rye. Don't know where it's made. I Googled it. I searched online. It doesn't tell you here. It just says it was produced and bottled in Georgetown Trading Company, LLC, in Los Angeles, California. Not sure how many distilleries are in Los Angeles. I'm going to probably fathom there's zero. However, for all the research I did, it's suggested that Pow Wow Botanical Rye is sourced from MGP, and then the botanicals are infused, making it unique. Bottom line, here's the thing. If you buy from a source place like MGP, you're going to be able to pick from a different series of recipes, blend them yourselves, cast condition them yourselves, change the proportions, change the final result. The end of the game is you can always create your own unique recipe, your own signature for your own brand. So the dirty little secret is this. There's someone who lets you buy whiskey from them so that you don't have to do it yourself. They have master distillers that have been doing this for many years, sourcing to many clients, and they have a pretty damn good reputation. Some experts have sat down and done blind tastings against many of the brands at MGP, and they can't find a single brand that tastes just like another brand because all the brands are mixing and matching to make something that's their own. And when you compare the source brands against brands not sourced at MGP, they rate higher at MGP than anywhere else. So you're basically sourcing from a product that has great quality and, as is, rates higher than some of your average products. The devil is in the details. You should really know where your product that you love is being distilled. Even if at the end of the day it's an MGP product or not, the deciding factor is your taste buds. But to me, the telling nature of a brand is how transparent it really is. A brand should tell you where it has been distilled. A link below is going to send you to all the distillers within the United States. One of them will say MGP and all the brands that MGP currently supports are listed in that document. Bottom line, be aware that this happens, but don't fault people for doing it. Enjoy the tasting experience. And now you have a little nugget of knowledge that you could share with your whiskey tasting friends. They probably don't know this is even a thing. Check your bottle. Is it made in Indiana? There's only so many distilleries in Indiana. More than likely, if it says distilled in Indiana, you have a source product from MGP, which means it's probably already above average. Now go forth. Spread this knowledge. Tell all your friends. You can indeed source whiskeys. Your favorite whiskey might be a source whiskey, but you know what? There's some damn good source whiskeys with some great brand names that have done their own unique thing for the industry. And a lot of these brands are creating beautiful whiskeys that are changing the game, making products that are better than what we've had in the past and better than anything Al Capone has ever had a chance to taste. Click the subscribe button, like and share this with all of your friends. Check out one of the two videos in the sidebar because they're going to send you down an adventure of knowledge that's just going to blow your mind. We're teaching you how to drink. In this case, whiskey.